Oh, oh good morning. Sorry about the face. <laughs> I went to the gym yesterday, and I think he some of the things that he had me do definitely stretched my back. So my back's kind of going. And then um, we went to the Houston Arboretum yesterday. And just absolutely, you know, did every little trail that they had. Uh, especially because I didn't want to do the big one because the big one just walks around the outer loop. And I'm like, I don't want to walk around the outer loop. But a lot of the little ones would intersect with the outer one. And so we'd take a little one out to the outer loop, walk until it didn't stick to the next little one and come back. It was an odd. It was, it was definitely odd. Because they have a big outer loop and a little inner loop and then a lot of little trails that connect the two. Um, so it was a lot of fun, but I'm definitely feeling it today. Definitely feeling it today. And it was interesting because we, uh, there was a chance of rain all day and it, we, it started raining literally as we got in the car, as we got in the car. And then it, <laughs> the ride home, there were a couple of times it got really heavy. I was not happy. So, uh. If you have it, if if you live in the area and haven't been to the Houston Arboretum, um, it's it's a it's a fun. I mean, it's probably a whole lot prettier in the spring, but I enjoy the the I enjoy it in the fall. I I or I enjoyed it in the fall. I'd like to go back and see it in the spring. All right, it is November fourth. Today, I meditate upon my divine inheritance. Every state of happiness that appears in the body or the mind is said to be due to the quality of goodness. And that is the Mahabha, Mahabharata. I'm going to spell that for you in case you want to look it up. Uh, M-A-H-A-B-H-A-R-A-T-A. -A -A -A. <clears throat> Beloved, now are we the sons of God. The kingdom of God is at hand. I inherit everything that belongs to this kingdom. The riches and the power and the glory of this kingdom are mine now. I do not rob anyone by entering into the fullness of this kingdom of power, of joy, and of abundance. I recognize that everyone inherits the same kingdom. There is no law of human heredity imposed upon me. Evil has no history. Limitation has no past. That which is opposed to good has no future. The eternal now is filled with perfection. I have, I always have been and always shall remain a complete, perfect, whole expression of the eternal mind, which is God, the living spirit almighty. All that the father hath is mine. I am now entering into a kingdom of good, which has, which love has prepared for me. I am letting go of all of the cares and fears of yesterday. I am looking forward to tomorrow in quiet confidence and with joyful expression. And I am living today in the glorious fulfillment of the law of good. Today I enter into the limitless variations, which is the divine spirit, which the divine spirit has projected into my experience. I know all I know that all things are good when rightly used. I perceive all I perceive that all experience is a play of life upon itself. I enter into the game of living then with joyful in anticipation, with spontaneous enthusiasm, and with the determination to play the game well and to enjoy it. Today I enter into my divine inheritance. I have freed my thought from the belief that external conditions are imposed upon me by birth through inherited tendencies or race belief. I proclaim the freedom of my divine sonship. I possess the kingdom of God today in all of its fullness. Okay, I'm going to straight up tell you, I think I've read this one before. <laughs> because it sounds very, very, very familiar. And uh, because last year, I, or well, I started in April of last year and read through, uh, a book called uh, three, uh, science 365 science of mind or science of mind three whatever and i think that this is the same one that was in there right up with that maybe with that quote not i think the quote was different um and the title's a little different 
but I'm pretty sure I've read this before. So when you read those 365s, just so you know, uh, and I'd be curious if I can go back and find this one again, if I'm going to say the same thing, which I'm not, I'm pretty sure, because one of the things that jumped out on me, and this is what I'm going to talk about today, is power. All right. Because in, in, in that first paragraph, he talks about uh, the, the riches and the power and the glory of this kingdom are mine now. I do not rob anyone by entering into the fullness of the kingdom, this kingdom of power. Because the only power we actually have is the power over ourselves. Um, if we had, that's the only true power that we have. We have power over ourselves. We have power over our mind. We have power over our body. We do not actually have power over other people. Now, that being said, other people can grant us power over themselves. Um, frankly, most of the time, I think that when we do that, we're making a mistake. If we give our power away to anybody. Now, there are times, like in emergencies, when you are dealing with people who know what to do in an emergency, that's absolutely a time to give up a little bit of your power and, you know, listen to the experts. Um, and we frequently do that a little bit when we go, like when we go and, and talk to medical, because I was in the doctor's office two days ago and, but I didn't give up my power, you know, cause he, we had a discussion over the blood pressure medicine. We had a, and I straight up told him, I'm not interested in taking cholesterol medicine. I'm not interested in taking anti antidepressants. And when I said, I'm not interested in taking antidepressants, he said, okay. Um, because I mean, probably a pretty short conversation with him, with me made him realize I, I have power over my body and I'm going to take it. Uh, I'm not going to just let him tell me what to do, but I am willing to listen. And so it was a conversation and that's where we, where we should be with most, I'm going to use the quotes, authorities. Um, they don't actually have any real power over us. We agree to abide by rules um, to make society work. So when we hear things about having power, what we have to remember is we only have power over ourselves, but only, but only we have power over ourselves. So the decisions that you make are yours. If you choose to accept advice from others, that's great. Uh, there are a number of times that I have gone and said, I don't know how to do this. Help me. So, because when you hear that, you you hear talks of kingdom and you hear talks of power and you hear talks of, of, of riches, we might get strange ideas. So let me, let me reel it back in. Let me reel it by, back in by reminding you the ultimate power that you have is over yourself. And really, honestly, that is the ultimate power because you make the decisions about your life. You choose whether you're going to be happy or not. You choose whether you're going to be healthy or not. Um, and it is to the level that you have taken up your divine inheritance of power over yourself that you have. Um, and it's the same with riches. Uh, when, when Ernest talks about riches, he's not talking about money. That's a part of it. But he's talking about the depth of your relationships, your, the depth of your relationships, um, with your family, with your friends, with your, uh, with your job, you know, what you do to make money. Uh, the depth of your relationships with your community, the depth of the depths of your relationship with nature, your, the depths of your relationship with the planet, your de the de you know, that's what we're talking about. You know, do you go out and see the sunrises? Do you go out and see the sunsets? That's a richness that is available to anybody if we're willing to accept it. Same thing of making, you know, uh, well, like I said, I went to the, the Houston Arboretum. I walked in that beauty. Now, it may not have looked beautiful to some because, you know, it's fall. The weather's turning. But it's still beautiful. It was still beautiful to me. And it was a richness of experience. 
which is what I'm after. So when we talk about our divine inheritance and we talk about riches and we talk about power and we talk about um, kingdoms, that's one of the things that we want to, we want to expand our definition of richness and possibly contract our, our definition of power. But when I say contract it, I mean contract it to ourselves. We are the subject of our power. But then expand the definition of the power that we have over ourselves. Recognize that we have the ultimate power over ourselves. And then it, when, it, when it comes to relationships of any kind from, you know, a personal relationship all the way up, then that's where we negotiate with our power. And that we truly don't have power over anybody else, but we do make social contracts. Uh, and then to recognize that the kingdom is all around us all the time. It's up to us to step into it. It's up to us to recognize it. It's up to us to live fully in it, to experience it. And that's some of where the power comes from or comes in. Probably both. Probably both. So today I meditate upon my divine inheritance. It's a spiritual practice. And so today I'm asking you to expand your definition of riches and pinpoint your definition of power. You do want to expand it, but narrow the focus. So, every state of happiness that appears in the body or the mind is said to be due to the quality of goodness. And that's the Mahabharata. Um, the quality of goodness. I might say that it's due to the wisdom. It's due to the wisdom. How... And wisdom, remember, is knowledge plus experience. Are you going out and having the experience? Because frankly, the more experience you have, the easier it is to be happy. Because you've tried things out and you know what makes you happy and what doesn't. And then you can exercise your power in what you do that's happy enough. So, this is a quote. It isn't a quote. I'm changing it. Beloved, now are we the children of God. The kingdom of God is at hand. It's all around us all the time. It is up to us to recognize who we are. That first statement, we are children of God. I inherit everything that belongs in this kingdom because you are a beloved child of God. The riches and the power and the glory of this kingdom are mine now. Go, look in your mirror, look in your eyes and say that statement to you, to yourself. Say it to yourself. The riches and the power and the glory of this kingdom are mine now. Claim it. Claim it every day when you wake up and see what changes that makes in your experience. I do not rob anyone by entering into the, the fullness of the kingdom of power, of joy, of abundance. Because what we want for ourselves, we want for everyone. We want everyone to have the same joy, the same power over themselves, the same abundance. We want everyone to have that. Um, I recognize that everyone inherits the same kingdom. Now, we are working on the social contracts because there is some work to be done there so that everyone recognizes that they enter into the same kingdom. And by that, I don't mean that I'm trying to go out and convert everybody to my religion. Everybody's religion is fine if it makes them happy. It's about recognizing within their words that they also inherit the kingdom. And again, back to the social contract contracts. But I'm going to stay off my soapbox for a moment. There is no law of human heredity imposed upon me. 
And that's kind of important to remember because, you know, that's one of the discussions I had with the doctor, you know, I have a human heredity of a couple of health conditions. One of them I'm managing, actually all of them I'm managing. One of them I am managing by taking a medication. The other two I'm managing just fine the rest of the way. So that's one I'm working on. No law of human heredity. Evil has no history. Limitation has no past. That which is opposed to good has no future. Because remember, evil does not have, is evil is not a power in and of itself. It's a misuse of the law. And that's what those social contracts are about. The social contracts are about using the law appropriately for everyone, not misusing that power. The eternal now is filled with perfection. The eternal now is filled with wholeness. I always have been and always shall remain a complete, perfect, and whole expression of the eternal mind, which is God, the living spirit almighty. I know who I am. I know who I am. I am a beloved child of God. And as long as I remember that, my life is better. And when I forget that, my life gets a little more messy. And then I remember and I can clean up the mess. All that the Father hath is mine. All that Spirit has is ours. Absolutely. Go read the prodigal son. In that story, you got the two sons. You got the one who said, give me my inheritance and let me go, and then makes a mess of it. But when he comes back, his father accepts him as if he had never left, as if he had never made any messiness of his life. And then when the other one who said, I've been here working the whole time, got a little upset, the father said, all that I have has been thine all the time. It's like, you just never stretched fully into what was yours the whole time. So all that the father, all that the spirit has is ours. I am now entering into the kingdom of good, which love has prepared for me. Actively entering into the kingdom. And we have to do that every day until it becomes our default. Until we wake up in the kingdom and go, yes, this is good. So we actively enter it every morning. And even once we, it becomes a default habit, we still actively enter it every morning. Because we open our eyes, look around at the world and go, yes, this is good. What can I do to make it better? And what can I do to make it better for everybody, not just me? Although, when we are talking about good, when we are using the law, as long as it benefits at least one person and harms none, it's good. It's good. If it benefits everybody, that's even better. But never think that it's not good if the only person it benefits is you. Because as long as it harms none, you're still making good use of that law. I am letting go of all the cares and fears of yesterday. I am looking forward to tomorrow in quiet confidence and with joyful expectation. And I am living today in the glorious fulfillment of the law of good. So right there, that's that, that little center paragraph. Those are power statements. Those are mantras. Those are practical. Say them to yourself. Say them out loud. Speak your word into power. And those are good words to use. Today I enter into the limitless variation which the Divine Spirit has projected into my experience. I know that all things are good when rightly used. And that's what I was talking about. When rightly used. To the benefit of and harms none. That's rightly used. I perceive that all experience is a play of life upon itself. I enter into the game of living then with joyful in anticipation, with spontaneous enthusiasm, and with the determination to play the game well and to enjoy it. To play the game well and to enjoy it. Which means don't get ultra competitive. <laughs> I know I can be a little competitive when, we're, when I game, so it's like enjoy the game. 
That's the purpose of life. It's to enjoy the game, to enjoy life. Today I enter into my divine inheritance. I have freed my thought from the belief that external conditions are imposed upon me by birth through inherited tendencies or race belief. What it means is if I fully enter into my divine inheritance, then nothing that anybody else has ever said matters to my health, to my happiness, to my joy. Nothing that anybody else said has mattered. So I can let my genetic her inheritance go. I can let race consciousness go. I can let all of that nonsense. And I can let the well-meaning but not well-placed things that other people say not ruin my happiness. I proclaim the freedom of my divine childship. I possess the kingdom of God today in all its fullness. And I remember that this is a vehicle and not who I am. So when this does succumb to race consciousness, it's not my fault because it won't touch the essence of me. So that's just one of those let me remind you, this material body is not who you are. You are a beloved child of God. You carry within you a divine spark. That divine spark can't be touched by anything material. That is who you are. So whatever experience you are having, if it is non-preferred, it's not your fault. Okay? It's not your fault. Because it's not who you truly are. You are truly a beloved child of God. And there is a part of you that nothing can touch. Only love. Alright, so what's the mission today? <clears throat> well, I think I'm going to go with this one. The mission today should we choose to accept it, is to let go of all of the cares and fears of yesterday. What does that mean? Let go of the cares of, and fears of yesterday and enter into the kingdom today. Enter into the love of God. Enter into the spirit. Enter into the knowing that you are the beloved child of God and that you can start fresh today. And that simple step can change your life. And you can do it again tomorrow. All right? That's what it means. So let go of the cares and fears. That's the mission. I'm also going to encourage you, as I always do, do something loving for yourself, do something kind for yourself, do something compassionate for yourself. Whatever it looks like. Today, it might look like snuggling up with a good book and a hot drink in a warm place wrapped in a warm blanket because it's not exactly warm outside. I love the change in the weather. Um, or it might be going out and taking a brisk walk <laughs> in this cooler weather. You know, whatever it is. Um, whatever is kind, compassionate, and loving for you because you are a beloved child of God, you deserve your own love, your own kindness, your own compassion. You absolutely do. I want it to become a default habit for you. I want it to become your first response. I want you to create a bank of that for yourself because you deserve it as a beloved child of God. And you, when you have that bank, then when you meet those people who've forgotten who they are, you have a little extra to share so that they can remember who they are. It's not your job to fix them. It never was. But sharing a little kindness, a little love, and a little compassion goes a long way. Goes a long way. All right, I would also tell you to engage your mind and your body, whatever that's going to look like. I would suggest going and getting a face full of sun, but, well, there isn't any right now here. 
Um, so stand in a bright light. Imagine the sun shining on your face. Actually, that does work. Imagining the bright light, it helps a little bit. Um, depends on how powerful your imagination is. And drink plenty of water. Although, with the change in the temperature, if you want to drink that water warm in tea, go for it. Or hot chocolate. Whatever. Okay, beloveds. Um, I want you to have an amazing day, a wonderful day, a fantastic day, a fabulous day, an enchanting day, a loving day, a good day. And if that is too much pressure, simply have a day. But whatever else you do today, open the windows of your soul. Allow the breath of heaven to remind you, you do live in heaven right here, right now. It is simply waiting for you to recognize it. It's all around you. So look for the good. Look for the good and praise it. All right, beloveds. Okay, it's Thursday. Oh, there's a prayer circle tonight. So if you need that, uh, Thursday nights, there is a prayer circle. It's about 7 o'clock. They do it over Telebridge. Um, so if you need that link, email info at creativelife.org. Um, I, I tend to forget about the prayer circle. But it's done by two wonderful pr practitioners. Um, about 30 minutes. So, you know avail yourself of it uh if if you would like and catch us on the social medias you know who we are you know who i'm the running rev ryan and we are creative life spiritual center or creative life spark depending on the platform so know that you're loved i'll see you around 9 a.m tomorrow reverend david should be on around 5 p.m today do what you need to do to take care of yourself and know that you're loved. I'll see you next time.